Now, Mama Obama, I have to say first and foremost that uh, congratulations are in order for you recently received a major United Nations award. When you received that award, you mentioned that uh, as far as you are concerned, the key issue is providing education to the young people in Kogero and beyond. They are going to be our future. I received the award for the work that I do with the orphans in Kogelo, um, and also not just Kogelo, but throughout Kenya. My advice will be to, for leaders or people in um, government positions, parents, teachers, let's give our youth the best we can so they can get a good education, that they can in turn help themselves. Like many other women of your generation, I gather that uh, you were denied an education when you were a girl. I was denied an education myself. I never got one. But I know what education can do for you. Once somebody gets an education, they can in turn help themselves and help their children and end the cycle of poverty. So just because I was denied an education, I don't want that to happen to any of these children. That's why I'm here, that's why I am taking the responsibilities of making sure that orphans are, uh, that are left behind get an education. There are those who say that uh, if you educate a boy or a man, you end up educating an individual. But you, if you educate a girl or a woman, you educate a community, you educate a village. I agree with that. Um, when you educate a man, he, um, most of them don't look back. Uh, they get a family and they concentrate on their family by themselves. But women, they always look back where they came from. Uh, so women tend to kind of like lift up the whole community. So I like that saying that says, if you educate a girl, you uh, educate an entire community or a village. Now let's talk about your foundation. How can people help you to realize your legacy? I have a legacy of great schools in Kogelo. I would like to see this done. I would like to see this legacy accomplished, uh, God willing, when I'm still here. So I'm asking the well wishes, anybody who's out there. Um, she has a website www.msof.org where you can go and make donations and um, also you can follow her uh, through Twitter at MSOF where you can see the progress as she breaks ground as we continue. Your foundation says that um, you need 12 million US dollars in order to accomplish your goal. How much of that have you collected so far? Go on. Yeah, so far we've had 100,000 uh, US dollars. I see. Let's talk about um, some of your success stories. I have a lot of success stories. Some of them, as we speak, um, got position of being a senator. Those are some of the orphans that are educated. I have kids in Moore University. Uh, I have a a, a girl in Nairobi University. I have another orphan in Bondo University. So I have a lot of success stories and it makes me happy to see that these orphans who didn't have a chance are now succeeding to be good people and um, they're also going to help themselves. There are a lot of people, perhaps millions of people, who are watching you on television and there are a lot of millions of people who are listening to you on radio in Kogero, in Kisumu, in Kenya, in East Africa, in Africa and beyond. Do you have any specific message for the young people who are watching you and are listening to you? For the young um, individuals who are still in school, work hard. Uh, the opportunity you have, I didn't get that opportunity, but if you have an opportunity to go to school, do your best. Be the best you can. And for leaders, uh, take care of your own. 
These are kids who are going to be our future. And for parents, look after your children. Make sure they get a good education. The Bamasara Obama Foundation was launched in 2009. Interestingly, that is the same year that your grandson became the president of the United States. Was it coincidental or is it perhaps because your grandson had arguably perhaps become the most famous, the most powerful man on this planet Earth? Before 2009, I had a community-based organization, which was just a local thing that was happening in the village. My work with orphans and children started way long, even before Barack became the president. 2009 is when I formed the Mama Sarah Obama Foundation, which was now a fully-fledged NGO. But my work with the orphans and widows has been going on even long before we knew that Barack Obama will be president of the United States. How does it feel like uh, to be a grandmother of a president of the United States? I feel good because even before he was a president, he sent me a ticket. I came here to visit him when he was still going to school. So now to see that he was able to be successful and now he's a president, it makes me happy. He worked hard, and that's what I tell even the orphans and, uh, that I take care of. Look what education can do for you. Look at my grandson. He's the president of the most powerful country. So I'm proud. I'm proud of him, and I'm happy to be here. How do you, for example, address your grandson, President Barack Obama, and how does he address you back? He calls me grandma, and I call him my grandson. Very interesting. <laughs>